What is up everybody? My name is Michael Burpo. I'm a watercolor artist and today you're going to be watching me paint Traverse Town from Kingdom Hearts 1. This is going to be a hard painting because there's not a lot of detail. Okay, so I'm actually showing my sketching process for the first time. Uh, in a couple of my other videos, I didn't really do a lot of sketching. It was very loose. But since this is an architecture painting uh, or a cityscape, it definitely requires a little bit more of a uh, refined sketch. So that way I feel like I uh, feel confident with where I'm placing the colors. And this is all about getting the uh, vertical and horizontal lines correct. And you can see I'm working with a, a little bit of a ruler. I try not to use a ruler too, too much because otherwise things can feel a little bit stiff. But I think that using a ruler uh, can help you feel like confident in how you're gonna be placing things. And you can see I'm spending a ton of time on this Fleur de Lis. Uh, Fleur de Lis, you know, this is the, the sign that says jewelry on it uh, in Traverse Town. And this is where you um, go and buy items and stuff like that. And when you're doing these video game illustrations, because this is from Kingdom Hearts 1, uh, you have to make up a lot of the the details because everything is sort of just, you know, boxed in there. And since this game is a little bit older, a lot of the graphics don't include, you know, some of the key details like, you know, grass stalks. Instead, it's just a grass, you know, pattern that goes in there. So it's kind of up to me to, you know, paint the those little details in myself and make it kind of come alive. But I think what was really fun about this painting is doing these crazy uh, lamp posts that have like all the sway to them, a lot of character. And those are really iconic for, for Traverse Town. So I, I'm, I'm pleased with how they, how they came out, at least in the sketch. And you'll see that I actually leave them until pretty much the very end before I, uh, you know, start painting them in because they're going to be the, the grounding and on the, on the foreground the most. So, Again, as you see, I don't actually paint in a lot of the details further away. I'm basically just trying to make sure that the goalposts that I'm going to paint through are going to be accurate. So you see I'm kind of jumping right almost into the into the end of it. This is a long sketching process. Hey, Traverse Town. Nick out. What's up, Paul? How you doing? Is Leon going to jump out on the page and beat me up? All right. Was it just me or did, was I just dumb? I didn't know that you could lose that and progress with the plot. I grinded so hard to get good enough to beat him. And I just kept on restarting because I thought that there was like something important uh, if, you, if you beat him. And uh, plot twist, there is not. Yeah, so painting uh, some of my favorite video game scenes is definitely something I'm going to try to do a little bit more of. I think it goes really well with Twitch, but also it's just kind of fun. Uh, I'd like to kind of imagine some of these scenes as if they are real life. Because if you look at Traverse Town, it definitely feels like it could be uh, a world, but some of the architecture is just so weird. And notice that a lot of the verticals and the um, details around the, the buildings don't seem to make a ton of sense or has structural integrity. But Traverse Town is definitely one of my, my favorite places. So I've been thinking about which other ones I should be doing. I have a couple of short listed ideas. Um, also, I enjoy the Little Mermaid music. So Kim Hearts 2 Atlantic is sort of a guilty pleasure of mine. Oh my gosh. I love how much shit people talk about it. I think it's really fun. Uh, the King of Hearts Atlantica is definitely a better overall experience. I think King of Hearts Atlantica, it, uh, for one, very difficult. Um, Atlantica vibes are good. I remember, I just didn't like how there's all of these um, combos based on air combos. And then you go there and they just totally get rid of them. <laughs> one of the things you'll see me do here as I paint deeper into this alley is I'm actually circling or boxing in some of the lights and that's just to keep the spot bright there go. all right now we can paint oh man all of that just to get to be able to paint I'm uh, an hour and 11 minutes in and I, I still got to pick up the paint set so one thing I do is I actually have uh, this little che cheater paper and I put my paper there because it will allow me to test my colors before I actually put it on the paper. It's just like insurance policy. Yeah, I use a little 
little scrap paper on the side to test my paints and a lot of the times it's for some more of the detailed paints but I do test make sure that things look all right because you know I'll be mixing them on my on my palette but you don't really know until they get mixed with uh, the white of the page uh, so you see me go in I'm throwing in a, a you know a really loose wash on all of the brown parts of the uh, of the buildings and then I'm, I'm just kind of setting aside all of the brights and you see me in the alleyway trying to paint around uh, where I had circled for the for the brights and the main point of this is just to start chipping away at the whites to make sure that I leave only the the light focus and so I'm going in it looks terrible right now this is the ugly stage this is a uh, part of color uh, this is part of watercolor and if you if you're not comfortable in this stage then you, you're not gonna make it but you can see I go in I'm popping in the uh, the brights of the of the lamps and the reason why is because orange is one of those colors it does not do super great painted on top of other things so you I have to get it in early and then paint around it uh, otherwise it definitely is going to, to feel pretty pretty grim and the other color is is this red I'm trying to pop that in there as well because it's obviously very striking in the painting so uh, and now I see as I can f start to paint things in, I can feel the mass in the middle, and I'm, I need to start uh, chipping away at all the darks. Um, so that's like the sky and the foreground. Those darks, once I add them in there, it will only leave the light sources, and it'll start to give me an idea of what the picture will actually look like when it's, uh, when it's completed. Let's look at this critically. A little quick critique. Let's look at this critically. All right, I gotta get the darks in there in the of that dark wood. It's gonna go all into here. I gotta get the sky in there really dark, and then just a little bit of the floor. Once I get that in there, these have to darken. I gotta get these nice little details of the mailbox and this poles. So I got a good ways to go. I think we got about another hour and a half left. I was wrong, it was not an hour and a half. It was quite a bit longer. But it is true, once you start getting in these details, these darks, it starts to give a little bit of form to the, uh, to the image. And I think that that's kind of when you start feeling a little inspired because you're starting to actually paint something. The washes can be a little demoralizing because things look a little ugly. But I think it's kind of fun uh, documenting this process. You can see that there is a long time where your painting does not look good. Uh, and you can see actually I go in there, it looks like I'm not painting anything, but I actually was dropping liquid mask onto the paper and what that'll do is you know keep my stars white and liquid mask is kind of weird to use it's very uh, clumpy and it dries and it'll ruin your brushes if you're not careful so i have a a brush dedicated to it but i'm actually letting it dry right now just as i go in i'm adding a little bit more of this this wood color to it and again i'm just chipping away at the uh the whites that i still have left i still have the lamp post i have the florida lee two florida lees now I'm, uh, I'm painting those in there because those yellows are going to be what really pops and moves your eye around the page. So I have to get those in early and then add the, the darks on top of it. And you'll see that I wash right on top of my liquid mask and I'm just trying to kind of pull some of that dark color, what my dark value is, which is a dark blue, uh, down. And you know that will kind of tie things in because dark is sort of like this, almost like a figure. Uh, it will mix in with other, or uh, as a value, it will mix in with uh, other colors and sort of uh, tint those colors back. So I'm using a glazing technique instead of just painting a true color down. It'll allow the sky and the darkness of the roofs to sort of mingle and make it feel like it's in the distance together. And now I'm just kind of going in and adding these pops to the, uh, to the, the distance. And the more detail I add, I think the more you'll be able to you know, grasp what it is I'm looking at and I'm just really going in oh, I love this lamp I think that it turned out really well they're really kind of funky I, I'd love to see one of these built in real life I wonder if anybody's ever built them but yeah I think I'm trying my best to make the the lamp stay bright that's the that's kind of the whole goal <clears throat> this middle section is very lacking in detail but at least everything else is in there and again, that's one of the, the key things that I've started to learn is that you can't really have a proper critique of your work until 
you have everything on the paper. And if you don't have everything on the paper, then the next step is not to fix it, but to get everything on the paper. So that's kind of why I don't go into these details until until now because I've added in the, the sky and the main mass and now I can just go in and uh, start to add the, the layerings and the details that'll really make it kind of shine because what will make this detail of uh, this this painting interesting to look at is going to be these details that you kind of associate with like a real city so it's not about being a video game illustration it's about making this painting feel like it could be somewhere somewhere real and that we can identify with it so i'm trying to add some things in that you kind of would associate with and the whole time i'm just kind of taking it all in as if it's like a, a a real place and what is it that i'm missing and one thing i noticed is that i painted the foreground in a little bit later than i should have i wish i would have gone in and painted the darks in uh earlier because that would have really made me uh, feel like there was a balance between the sky and the ground but instead i did focus kind of a lot on the the main uh massive image of of the image and as a result I think that's where all the detail went instead of in the foreground, which is not wrong. It's just a different approach. And if you enjoy watching me paint uh, in a sped up version, you might like it watching me paint uh, live. And I go live on Twitch every uh, just about every Thursday at around 630 Eastern, as well as Sunday at around 230 Eastern. If you enjoy watching me paint, I talk through my process as much as I can. And I usually paint my commissions or just things I enjoy uh, live. And I'm trying to make it to affiliate, which is when you get the 50 followers. So if you don't mind, give me a follow at twitch.tv slash burpski. That's B-U-R-P-S-K-I. And uh, help me reach that goal. And I can start uh, giving out VIP badges and enjoying myself. This painting was one of the hardest and longest that I've done. Uh, it was... I, I think I did four and a half hours live of the sketching and the painting. And then I did about another two hours afterwards that I didn't record, unfortunately. And I think that as I get better, I can do longer stretches of live painting. But right now, the limit that I can do and still be entertaining and still paint well is about three hours. So I think that's kind of the, the limit I'll probably have for myself. I think it was a really fun time painting Traverse Town, and it's definitely something I'm gonna hopefully uh, do more. I think that a couple of the video game ideas I have, I'd love to do like Rivendell or, or you know from Lord of the Rings, or maybe a couple of views from Skyrim, or uh, maybe something from Star Wars. Something that you feel like is iconic, but also you know very interesting to paint. So thanks for watching. All right, everybody, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed my painting of Traverse Town from Kingdom Hearts 1. Um, I really enjoyed painting this. Uh, I think it was kind of uh, a real challenge. There's a lot of details in here, and I wish I would have done more of it on stream. Uh, I did the main parts of it, and then I did all the touch-up off stream. But I got to be honest, you probably didn't want to see all that. It's going to be, uh, it's just a lot of me sitting there messing around with it. But if you're interested, this painting is available for purchase on my Etsy, as well as a number of other prints. Um, I think I'm going to start uh, keep painting more video game uh, locations. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, I think that if you're interested in uh, collecting one of my pieces, you should definitely stop by uh, my Etsy. The link is in the bio. And you should also stop by my stream. I typically stream on Thursdays at around 7 p.m. Eastern Time, as well as Sundays at around 2.30 uh, Eastern Time. Uh, thanks so much and keep an eye out for the next video. Bye.